This is the other cat with a C. I'm Tarantula Cat now. Oh my I'm gosh. I'm taking over this channel and I know nothing about spiders except they're cute. Just so you guys know, Mushroom Wednesday is still available, only a little bit longer though. So if you want to get one, you better pre-order because they are limited and we will not be doing this again. <laughs> like it was already hard enough to remake her. So yeah, we're not doing it again. So if you want it, I'm so serious. Um, anyway, we are in Florida. We are at Animal Con. I just got back from kind of walking around this morning. Today's industry day. So we just kind of like all get together and talk about like uh, content creation centered around animals. Honestly, I could probably take a nap right now. I'm already tired, but I have a panel coming up here at three, which is in like less than an hour, but I'm really excited about it. It has Tanner from Serpa Design and and he's really awesome. I was talking to him about snapping turtles earlier because if you watch his content, you already know he has snapping turtles. And yeah, he's so nice. I, I know he was here last year, but I didn't really get a chance to talk. I, I love the people who make snapping turtle content because there's there's not many people out there who do. What else? Oh, uh, Inspire Exotics is on the panel. She has um, a TikTok and an Instagram. She's really cool. The guy from Tanked, Brett, Brett Raymer. I don't know if that's how you say his name, but I m saw him earlier. I also don't really know him. I met him last year, but but this year I got around to talking to him, mostly petting his dog. Um, so yeah, he's on the panel also, and it's just uh, Ke uh, Kevin from Nerd. Th there's like a ton of really cool creators on there. So I'm excited and I have that panel up today. Tomorrow I have four and I'm moderating one. I was supposed to moderate two, but I gave one to Richard because I did not want to moderate two. It's already um, hard enough to do one. It's just like talking in person is way different than talking like to a camera. And also when I'm making content about my animals, it's more about them and not really about me. So like in person here, it's, I don't know, it's weird. I'm awkward. I'm so awkward in person. And Mr. Tarantula Cat's no help either because he's he's actually even more awkward. So way to go. Very awkward. <laughs> We're both just like recharging our social batteries right now. And Fiona's working on some homework because you know, it is, school is a thing still. So. <laughs> Why do kids always tell on you like that? She was doing homework though. I have pics to prove it. See, look, I, I we did right there. But yeah, I'm having fun so far. Let's see. Um, this is Dan the Turtle Man. He's my favorite turtle person to go to whenever there's a problem with Bowser. He's one of the first people I always ask. His, his turtle content's awesome if you like turtle content. You guys probably know Jay from Brian's vlogs. So that was cool. Last year we didn't get any pictures together. So I was like, we need to get some pictures together this year. Dave and Dion. That's a good one. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, of course. Gotta take one with Tarantula Cribs. Use affiliate code CAT10 to save 10% on all these enclosures. Check this out though. I'm so stoked. Here's the new Halloween ones that are coming out. Orange and black. The orange is transparent and there's gonna be a purple one too. So I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. Sorry, Mo. Oh, this one's cool. Look, I was gonna take a picture with Tanner and then I was like, Richard, you should get in it too. I'm trying to talk him into getting a tarantula, you guys. Tell him he needs to get some tarantulas. Then again, everybody would go watch his tarantula content and he'd make us look bad because his enclosures are so good. He'd literally just like make us look like- Scrubs. Make us look like scrubs. <laughs> So this is the car that I rented. And also here's the hotel. It's very, very pretty here. I guess it's like a resort. And over here is where the whole convention is. And of course, we're gonna talk to the, the pros over here. We're gonna get some of the tips and tricks that they use to manage all this craziness that goes on on social media. Uh, I'm Tanner. I run the Serpa Design YouTube channel. I specialize primarily in naturalistic enclosure design. Sorry, I, I forgot about the social platforms thing. I primarily work off of YouTube. Uh, my name's Alex. I run the Leafy Street channel. I specialize in just having lots of animals. I'm currently on three platforms, TikTok, Instagram, on YouTube at the moment. Hello, my name is Jamie Shank and I'm the executive curator at the San Antonio Aquarium and we have a lot of platforms. Hey there, I'm Jamie Lee and I'm with Bird Tricks. We mostly do YouTube but we do Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. My name is Tarantula Cat and I mainly do YouTube but I also do 
pretty much all the mentioned platforms as well. Hi, I'm Dakota from Inspire Exotics. I primarily do Instagram. I manage like four different accounts for many brands on Instagram, but I also dabble in TikTok and YouTube as well. My name is Sean Baker. I'm the uh, social media community manager for Aquascape, and I manage specifically Greg Woodstock, the Pond Guys uh, page, and and um, on all those platforms and at the Pond Professor. No, uh, so my name is Brett Reamer from the Show Tank. All the platforms, TikTok, Instagram. I realized it was a lot easier when someone else did it for you. But other than that, uh, I run my own and most of my own social media channels. I'm Kevin McCurley. I own New England Reptile and we're on all the uh, platforms, essentially. I'm Neptune and Chameleon, all things Chameleon on all the platforms. I do Facebook, no one's mentioned Facebook yet. I, I sprinkle, yeah. dabble in Facebook. I know social media could get overwhelming, especially when you're trying to juggle every single account, all these different platforms. Do you guys have anybody on your team that helps you? Um, I, I edit all my own stuff for a couple reasons. Um, the main one is that my raw footage is just embarrassing, and I don't want anybody to see that ever. Um, but the other reason is because I feel like editing is like as much as part of the process as filming is. Like I'll see like how I want this video to turn out in my head before I film it. And then I film around that and then I edit it and there's no way I could explain that to somebody and have it come out the way it's in my head. Like I, that's like the outlet part for me is the actual editing part. And that's what takes the longest, unfortunately, but it's wor worth it for me at least. What kind of schedule do you guys have for filming and editing? Is it like a strict schedule or is it more like whatever you see with your animals? Maybe they do something they've never done before and you want to capture it. Uh, so for myself, I'm probably not a good role model for <laughs> any of this, but I film and edit every single day. So it's like I'm always capturing content. It means I don't have a very good work-life balance. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But like as far as YouTube videos go, that's my first priority. I gotta get it done every Saturday. Sometimes I skip. I've been giving myself more grace lately, but I try to upload every Saturday. Okay, so Instagram is uh, my fun platform also. I think Tanner said that. Or if some, if like a situation's unfolding, like say a tarantula molts, immediately I'll post that to Instagram. Like I don't batch film anything like that. But if, if something happens that I can sit down and like make a whole video about, then I'll save it for YouTube. But like as for just like fun little things like oh this tarantula molted or the, the, something laid eggs or babies are hatching you know unless I can sit down and do a whole video or find a way to like creatively construct a longer form video on it then yeah short form is just like ongoing and then not planned it's just when it happens. Social media algorithms are, are funny they they change every now and then I think like you know it's kind of hard sometimes to stay up to date with what's going on and what the platform is asking for but what are some strategies that you guys use for each individual platform that you've noticed that have actually brought in more eyes? So for YouTube content you have the advantage of making a title like you're not just having people scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. They're actually looking at the titles. So for me, like the title is like one of the, the biggest parts of it. Here we are, it is day two of Animal Con and I had a chaotic morning. I woke up at 9.30, I had a panel at 10. So I had to like ninja get ready, go to Starbucks because there's no way I could do any kind of talking like that before coffee. But anyway, the panel went so well, I had so much fun. And then I had a meet and greet afterwards. It was so amazing to meet people, a lot of fun. I, I brought my Polaroid camera with me again this year, so I decided to take like selfies. Um, I'm, I'm working on the same thing I did last year where I start taking Polaroid selfies with everyone. So this is what I've got so far this morning. Dave, Clint, Brian, of course, Tarantula, Cribs, Jay, Kat, Adam, Dion, so far, but I there's still a few people People I need to hunt down actually a lot of people I need to hunt down I have a couple panels in like an hour I haven't eaten anything yet so I'm gonna go grab some food and then um, do three panels in a row it'll be three hours straight of talking and one of them I'm moderating so I'm a little nervous about that I'll sprinkle that in here as well so hopefully that goes okay and um, I keep getting notifications from my cameras at home uh, Bowser keeps setting the cameras off because he he snaps so loud that it picks up sound and it alerts me but so yeah it's going good I, actually I'm having a lot of fun this year I you know Ants Canada and Darkton couldn't make it this year so I was a little bummed I didn't know if it'd be as fun but honestly I'm having 
having a great time. Wish they were here though, of course. And yeah, so I just wanted to stop in and give some context to some random clips I've taken. Editing this video is gonna be a nightmare, but I know it'll come together. So I am doing a panel about bug anatomy and physiology. But first, I guess let's start out with uh, introductions. So everybody introduce yourself. Hello, um, my name is Wojtek. I came from Poland and I own a YouTube channel named Venomous Arts. It's about um, tarantulas, true spiders, and other and insects mainly. Uh, it's Gaslam. I have a YouTube channel, Tarantula Haven, and mine is mostly about tarantulas, but I also do videos about other invertebrates as well. My name is Richard with the Tarantula Collective, and my voice is apparently much louder than everybody else's. <laughs> my name is Jeremiah Gonzalez. Uh, I run the YouTube channel Lights, Camera, Ants, and I make short little ant videos uh, of uh, what, 20 ant colonies that I have. I'm a drunk panel, sorry. Where are you going? I'm a drunk panel. I am in the restroom one. <laughs> oh my god. So we lost one. <laughs> sorry guys, next, next. Okay, it's just us. So the first thing I want to start off with is basically some bugs have special features that help them, you know, blend in with their habitat. So think of like a dead leaf mantis that looks like a we, we uh, get wrong rooms. Think of dead leaf mantis and how they blend in with their habitats. What are some of your favorite bugs or like features of like spiders and stuff that help them blend in with their habitat? Recently I've gotten into some insects and one of my favorites happens to be the blue feigning death beetle. That's a mouthful to say. I love that their adaptation, they don't have any kind of real defense mechanism, biting or stinging or anything like that. They play dead. You know, I guess it works for them because they're seeing to be prolific. I, I recently I've been doing a lot of like, studying, I guess, uh, different aspects of tarantulas, trying to figure out mainly their color. I'm mean, trying to figure out why some tarantulas have the color or the pattern. And I, there's just, there's a whole, not a whole lot of research on to exactly why, you know, like the green bottle blue has green and blue colorations. Uh, researcher was suggesting and he, that the predatory animals of that species are mainly nocturnal, so you know, cats and things like that, that kind of have almost like a night vision already. So the way they view the world, it would look different than how we see it. So at night, it would, everything would kind of have more of a greenish hue or a bluish hue. And in that situation, those green, bright greens and uh, blues would almost just be camouflaged. Like they wouldn't even see it. Whether that's true or not, I, I don't I think it remains to be seen, but I thought it was very fascinating. Um, one thing I noticed when I came to doing like researching ants, and one that caught my eye, was turtle ants and the way the way they, they go about doing their daily lives is you have your regular workers they're rather flat and so they, they stick low to to whatever they're crawling on combined with the fact that they're a very small ant for the most part it's hard to see them and unless you're really looking for them you're not going to see them and what makes it even more difficult to find is the fact they, that they live inside twigs they have these soldiers or these majors rather that use their heads to block off the nest entrance. Yeah. yeah. You can introduce yeah. yourself too, because uh, oh, we you kind of missed the intro. Camera is off right now. Okay, uh, but first, nice to meet you. My name is Czemek. I came all the way from from the Poland. And we have one of the biggest tarantula shop in uh, my country. If I uh, notice the answer the question correctly, it was about like camouflage. Yes, mm -hmm. something like that. The main thing about uh, camouflage for me, uh, what is incredible, tarantulas that are, that are building traps. For example, uh, I don't know if it's common here, but if you tell a mira, it's like a very interesting spider. It's not even like trapper spider. It's incredible how they can build this, like how they can construct th things like that. It's the main thing about camouflage. I'm always interested in that they can dig a hole, camouflage all this entrance with like dirt, silk. You cannot find a single entrance when you look. Some bugs, tarantulas, they have, you know, special parts of their anatomy that blend in with their environment or uh, behaviors that they do. Does this affect how you make their enclosures in captivity? And if it does, how? Yeah, uh, when we, I guess I speak for all of us, when we design our tarantula enclosures or when we set up our tarantula enclosures, we try to mimic as best as possible what their natural environment would look like or where they would live naturally. Uh, one comes to mind in particular, uh, Typhoclina celadonia, the uh, Brazilian jewel. I just recently got one. And when I set it up, I purposely took a piece of cork bark and drilled the hole in it not all the way through but just enough to where it had an area that it could make its den. I left the wood shavings in there and I added some moss and other things that she could possibly use to cover up her entrance. And there an arboreal trapdoor which is a very unique thing about that particular species. After a while it started 
started to, it roamed around and it found the hole that I had created, started to web it up, and then next thing I know, it just became invisible. The cork bark didn't even look like it had been damaged or drilled or anything, and like he said, you couldn't tell that there was anything in there. Hope you guys are ready for my intense questions. The fish. Hey, how you doing? My lens is fogging up because it's so humid outside. Giant yellow spider, like literally the size of my palm of my hand. Yeah, yeah, so exactly this one. Yeah. So You're we talking do about what? And it's some 300 filas or the filas. Are you talking like a Pokemon? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, just orb weavers. Yeah, the the ones here. I want to find it here. So they they occur here. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. yeah they no, they yeah. make eight foot long golden webs. Awesome. I have one. I'll show you a picture. Yeah. Yeah, we should. So I am meeting somebody, their name is Paws, Tails, Fins, and Scales. They make awesome art, check this out. You have an Instagram? I do. She also has spiders, so check her out. So we have Brian and Lights, Camera, Ants here. And we're just taking a walk around Animal Con. I feel like this year is bigger and better. What do you guys think? Yeah. There's so many more animals this year and so much more people too. Clint, literally Clint came this year. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. It was, it's been an amazing year. I mean, just seeing, like you said, all the new people, the people that obviously support us last year like these guys coming back uh, it's it's amazing and I'm so blessed to be able to be around you guys you guys inspire me every day and, uh, and, and I just appreciate you so much well thank you for having us and yes. putting this all together uh, we have Gatorland tonight so that will be fun <laughs> talk long because you guys have had a lot of talks and speaking and all that other stuff. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that I love you. I'm going to absolutely promise you I'm not going to cry. Uh, not in front of you again because I've cried like 10 times today. Uh, so uh, I, I want to just thank each and every one of you guys. I truly, as I look through uh, the audience here, I love you. I'm a fan of so many of you guys. The majority of the creators here I watch religiously and the ones I don't because you suck. But, uh, <laughs> I haven't watched yet. I don't know. I will start watching and I appreciate you guys. Come on. We're good. Yeah. All right. I got chicken legs. Ew. Ew. It was wet. Going right over here. Make sure you don't put your hand in his mouth. Right in his mouth. There you go. Do you want to try here, little one? Right here. Just don't put your hand in his mouth, okay? Throw it away, he's gonna eat us! There you go, you did awesome. Thank yep. you. And remember, everybody gets two, so go grab another. Uh, I know who you are. Uh, hey, I bought a tarantula crib because of you. Uh, throw it, throw it! Run, 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 run! No, I'm kidding. That was a little blurry. Do you, that's okay, do you wanna do another? There you go, throw that one far, throw that one far. Yeah, yeah. when you saucing it up. Yeah! Awesome. So it is Monday and I, I guess Animal Con is over, which is really sad. This year was so much fun. I, I really didn't think it'd be as fun as last year, but I'd say in a lot of ways, it was even more fun than last year. Um, so we're actually leaving Orlando tomorrow, but before we do, we're going to Magic Kingdom. So as you see, I've got my whole fit. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty cool. I'm not like really that big into Disney, but I've never been there and you know, we're right next to it. So we're gonna go see what it's about and have some fun. Um, I, I will spare you guys. I know you're here for the animals, so <laughs> we're not gonna become family vloggers today, but um, I just wanted to close this out and thank everyone who came here to meet me. Everybody who came here and didn't know me and left a friend, um, that's awesome. Like I met so many new creators this year that I didn't know and I got to know other creators better this year than I, than I did previously. So it's been a really Really fun weekend and um, thank you so much Brian Barczyk for putting this together yet again I'd say it was a huge success I think everybody had a lot of fun it exceeded a lot of people's expectations and that's all until next year